Good afternoon and thank you very much for joining us today for this RC Psych welcome event for specialty trainees. My name is Charlotte and I'm the training manager at the college so I've been working alongside our psychiatric trainees committee to put together this afternoon's webinar. We held a similar event last week for core trainees which had really great feedback um, on the usefulness of the session so we really hope that today will be just as beneficial for you all. We've got some great speakers this afternoon to introduce you to the work of the college and how we can best support you in your training. We've also got Dr Chris Walsh, Chair of the Psychiatric Trainees Committee joining us to give an overview of the work of the PTC, how they can support you and how you can get involved. We'll then be joined by Dr John Russell, who's going to provide some really helpful information about the new curricula and how this will impact your training. And finally, we'll be joined by some RC Psych, RC Psych staff members who will talk you through some of the fantastic opportunities offered by the college. Please do provide your comments and feedback throughout the afternoon using the chat box function and use the Q&A function for any questions that come up throughout the session. Our panel members will be around to answer any questions you might have as we go along and we'll also have a Q&A session planned at the end of the webinar for you. So I'll now hand over to Dr Trudy Senevaratni, our college registrar, who was sadly unable to join us live today but has pre-recorded a welcome for you. So I'm hoping that one of my colleagues will be able to load that up for us shortly. Welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Trudy Senvaratna. I'm the Registrar of the Royal College of Psychiatrists and I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you to this specialist trainees event today that's been organized by the PTC. So thank you to Chris Walsh and colleagues who have, uh, and our college staff who've helped to organize this. Um, first of all, I just want to say a huge congratulations to all of you. Uh, I know you've worked really, really hard to get to this place. So, so you've all been joining through your February and your September start dates. Um, passing your exams are, are behind you now and you're entering this very important phase which is working out uh, where you want to go forward in psychiatry. So a huge thank you to you and I also sort of want to remind you what the college is here for. So you know the college officers very much work as a team. We work with Chris and the chair of the PTC to think about what all your needs are. As you move forwards um, I mean, as a registrar, I help to look after policy, to help look after communications and, and well-being and uh, looking after our membership, including, including yourselves. And obviously with the president and the dean and the treasurer and with our college staff and our chief exec, we, we work really hard to make sure that we're giving you absolutely all you need um, from your time as uh, trainees onwards into your future careers, whatever you choose to do. Uh, I want to encourage you to take part in as many college activities and groups and committees as possible. There is, you know, this is your college. Uh, and I remember that actually as a trainee, I started to get involved in the general adult faculty and the, at the time actually it wasn't even a perinatal faculty, it was a perinatal special interest group and I was a trainee rep on that group. And, uh, and actually I went on from that time as ST uh, to eventually, it was really, really lucky to then become the faculty chair, perinatal faculty chair, many, many, many years later. Um, so there are lots of opportunities, there's special interest groups that span your specialty, but also other specialties, lots of interesting areas like informatics, um, the diversity of who we are as psychiatrists. So, you know, there's a women's special interest group, there's a rainbow special interest group, um, there's also an LGBTQ plus um, other activities and groups that you can join. Um, there's all the equality agenda that we're working very hard towards as a college. So make this, you know, really count for you. Going forwards, you, you know, we are a really, really important specialty. We're the bedrock of medicine, actually. And uh, thinking about how the college can support you in all your needs, not just in the clinical domain. Obviously, the college is here to help you advance your knowledge and your understanding through all lots of CPD activities, but we're also here to help you with things like management and strategic thinking, 
and to give you those tools and skills in research and education. So there are some fantastic courses that you can take uh, as part of that as well. So look, with that, I'm going to say thank you to you all. Um, there is a fantastic programme ahead of you that you can hopefully, and you will enjoy. So thank you to Chris, uh, who's our cu current uh, chair for the PTC and the group for arranging this. Um, just to end by saying, please do hold on to our amazing college values. We worked hard to really embed college values to the whole of the college and, and how we work with them. Um, they they come to an acronym called CIRCLE, so a, a virtuous, but also a very hardworking uh, and a humble circle where we embrace values such as courage, um, innovation, uh, we have respect, collaboration, learning and excellence. So bringing all those elements to everything that you do. So thank you so much and really, really enjoy your um, event today. Thank you very much to Trudy for that welcome and for Sarah for sharing it for us. Um, so I'm now going to hand over to Dr. Chris Walsh, our current chair of the Psychiatric Trainees Committee or PTC. Uh, that's great. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, hopefully, um, oh, I'm going to start my video. Uh, hopefully you, should, you guys should be able to see me and hear me and see my slides. Um, Charlotte, we just let me know. Yeah, cool. That's cool. And uh, excellent. Uh, listen, guys, thank you so much um, for coming uh, today to um, to have a chat to us about um, your training. I guess uh, so. You're coming in as ST now. I'm ST4 myself, so this is fairly recent for me. And um, it's lovely to come through the application process and have uh, this being the last big step on your journey to becoming a consultant. And um, it's just uh, wonderful to have you with us. Um, I'm conscious as well that we often get a lot of people coming to these talks who are interested in ST training um, and even people who are interested in other routes um, towards completing um, their specialty um, training in, in other capacities in terms of CSER and things like that. So we often get lots of questions and uh, comments from a variety of different people about those things. So please populate the chat and the question functions with anything that you can think of that you want answered um, because we've got a sort of a good panel of people today who will be able to either Either, uh, answer them for you or at least take them forward and get them answered um, properly in the future. Um, so my name is Chris Walsh, I'm the chair of the Psychiatric Trainees Committee in the UK. Um, so effectively we have about 6,000 psychiatry trainees in the UK and we have about 40 to 50 um, reps on our committee um, that I chair at the moment um, and you can meet those reps um, or meet me and the other two executive officers by scanning those QR codes and um, you can have a look at this presentation at the end um, and it'll be available to look at afterwards as well in case you want to look at that in more detail um, and find your local rep to maybe have a chat and um, discuss how you get involved with the PTC in various capacities. Uh, just kind of to see where you sit in the middle of all of this because sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming particularly if this is your first time working in the UK and you're working as an ST and haven't had the um, the, the same experience as other people completing core training. Um, psychiatry trainees sit in the middle of various organisations which all kind of work together to make your training happen. Um, you've got the BMA which a lot of people will obviously be very sort of uh, conscious of at the moment given the industrial action and that's a separate organisation um, to the rest of them. It's a trade union so it sort of doesn't have direct links other than sort of um, connective talks with other organizations and um, but where you'll sit in amongst um how the college interacts with other organisations is between the trusts that you work for, the deaneries or schools locally, and then the college itself centrally. So uh, the college will design training for you and it creates the curriculum. It formulates the ways that the, the curriculum is assessed, manages the e-portfolio, which is the platform that that will be documented upon so that your ARCP or end of year reviews can be um, summarised and kept in one place. It sets the standards for training because uh, our training internationally is regarded as being the best in the world. Um, we had just the most wonderful welcome ceremony yesterday for the new members, um, which is one of the ceremonies we've had this year. And I spoke to um, various incredibly inspiring people. One woman was the first woman um, from Jordan to ever complete the Emerson Psych exam. And she was just there standing in front of me being extraordinarily humble and wonderful and stuff. And she's coming to join us for higher training in the UK. So um, we, yeah, it's, it's sort of setting standards for on the world stage, really. And they also provide the exam 
examinations, which set those standard or assess those standards as part of the overall process of becoming um, a higher trainee that you've already been through. Um, they then connect with the dean of your school, which locally then um, put these things um, into action and make sure that you're actually being delivered the training you're supposed to be being delivered. They're the people who actually make it happen. And then the trust is usually your employer, either directly or if you sometimes you work for a thing called a single lead employer, which is where you actually work for the deanery of the school and they second you to the trust to work. Um, and they deal with your local things like your rotas and annual leave and stuff like that. Um, we, our work tends to centrally focus around the connection between you and the college and you and the deaneries or schools and then the interaction between the college and the deaneries or schools. Um, but we are always happy to discuss things to do with what's happening locally with your trusts and difficulties um, because the primary function of the PTC is to gather feedback from trainees across the UK to take back to the various councils and committees in the Royal College in order to make sure that the extremely high standards that the college has are being both set and met. Um, so um, just briefly in the structure of the PTC, so um, separately within the college, you have the faculties, the special interest groups and the subcommittees, as Trudy briefly spoke about in the last talk there, um, which discusses everything from the LGBT SIG, there's the addictions faculty, there's a digital psychiatry SIG, um, which cover all the ranges of subspecialties and different branches of psychiatry. Um, they, we, the local reps directly, there's 40 to 50 reps across the UK that cover um, all the geographical areas. And we've got a military rep and IMG rep and things like that, um, who liaise with the faculties um, and special interest groups and subcommittees by sitting on of those and then feeding back to the PTC committee. But the core PTC committee meets three monthly. We're in constant contact via informal channels and we have direct access to the main college stakeholders. So the training department, the events department, the chief examiner, um, the Dean for Curricula, who's on today, um, John Russell, um, and um, we have this wonderful relationship with these people, which is driven by the fact that the senior people in the college are extremely interested in what trainees um, are thinking and doing and how they're interacting and accessing training, um, which is something that is unique in a lot of ways to our college. I sit on um, the Academy of Royal Colleges um, Trainees Committee, where they sort of chief um, representative for each trainee um, or for each training body in each college all meet together um, three or four times a year and certainly it's not the case in a lot of other colleges so um, it's about the family approach I guess that we take to psychiatry in our college. Um, the PTC is majoritively here to make sure that you always have somebody to talk to because the complexity of how all the different moving parts of training work together is incredibly difficult at times and um, we get the beauty of having the contact with the right people and also the exposure to a significant amount of training and discussion that helps us answer a lot of questions in relation to how training works. So um, it's about being able to approach your local rep or if you don't have a local rep or struggling to find the right person just to contact us centrally and for us to help you navigate and manage some of the difficulties of training. We feed back to the college, as I said, and the idea behind this is to improve and retain quality trainees in psychiatry. Um, that we want you to complete your higher training because you're having a fantastic time and your training needs are being met, and that you um, have a higher high desire to be a consultant and to um, to work down that career path that you've begun today. Um, so, and ultimately, the dean of the college is very keen that. Um, that happy trainees equals happy patients in the way that the more uh, quality that we have in relation to our training, et cetera, then the, the better quality that we will be able to provide for our patients. So we kind of sit across four main domains whenever we interface the college. The first is with regards to exams. Um, and this is a whole pile of things in terms of um, and being involved in standard setting, being involved in appeals of exams, being involved in feedback in terms of how the design, exams are designed and produced and delivered. Um, and uh, the college are very receptive to feedback on that. Um, in terms of the actual training process and achieving your ARCP goal at the end of each year and um, the formulation of the e-portfolio and how things like that are accessed and then recruitment and retainment within psychiatry. Um, that's the kind of core of the work that we do, which means that um, that would be the bit that you guys would contact us if you were struggling or had questions about. But aside from that, we produce a whole pile of events, which um, both have the fantastic opportunity for people to network in the college and to get involved a bit more, but also um, in terms of being able to um, have... Um, access to educational events that are specific to training and that are targeted towards the the desire for for what trainees want to be 
taught about or learned about. This is our last year's um, conference, which was the first face-to-face -face conference back in London. So we themed it around and the idea of sort of the tube map lines being to do with the different aspects of um, being a psychiatrist and how all those interfaces cause problems and difficulties and opportunities and threats um, for us and um, how we navigate all of that. Um, and this year, our conference is all around taking a step um, back from the sort of biological aspect that we can get very easily preoccupied with in terms of psychiatry and looking at more of the um, sort of psychosocial aspects of things. So looking at, at really controversial topics like anti-psychiatry and looking at um, um, drug assisted microdosing during medical psychotherapy and all of this kind of sort of stuff. So um, hopefully that'll be really interesting. So I can sort of plug that for people to potentially attend if they would like to come to that. It'll be, it's on in Cardiff in May. Um, and um, you can access information by scanning that wee QR code about it there in the corner of the screen. Um, we're piloting something at the moment, which is where we're connecting um, all of the educational activities that we're producing to um, HLOs or high level outcomes on the new curriculum. Um, and um, this means that people can plan their study leave um, in, a, in a better way and people can proactively link some of the um, uh, ideas that they're having about what they want to do um, this year and next year in and ongoing in their um, psychiatric work towards meeting these HLOs um, through their PSPDPs, which I'm sure um, John Russell will speak about, which is the um, placement specific um, professional um, plans that we put in place at the start of each year. Um, we have a magazine which comes out three times a year that we love for trainees to write for. It's a level one certified publication, which means that you get one out of four points in the drop down box for um, your red applications, which you've already gone through, which is sort of slightly pointless, but it's a good thing to advertise if other people you know are going through the process. And you can read the current issue, which is the wellbeing issue, um, where we look at different aspects of how trainees can maintain their wellbeing through these difficult times. And again, can be accessed on the college website or scan in that QR code. Um, we do loads of regional events. This is an example of one of the events we did in Northern Ireland last year and another example of an event that we're, again, we're doing in Northern Ireland this year, again, linked to the EHLO curriculum items. Um, you should see local and regional events happening in your area and you're very encouraged to be involved in the process of developing these events, both from a managerial perspective, but also to make sure that the stuff that you're being taught about and that you're getting to spend time away from your clinical work to, to learn about um, is actually reflective of, of the work that you want to see done. Um, so what does the PDC mean for you? Um, the first thing is, is that we want um, there to be a Zen quality to these three or five years, depending on your higher training, um, whether you're doing dual or, or single CCT training, um, in the way that all of these parts should be able to work harmoniously together and link together in a way that is comfortable and manageable for you so that you're enjoying your experience. If that isn't happening because everything's clashing and clunking and that kind of stuff, we're the people to speak to to try and smooth some of out and offer support. Um, but also as well, we want to be able to um, point you in the right direction if there's something you're interested in. And um, if you're building your career and you really want to be involved with something to do with LGBT psychiatry, or you would love to know more about psilocybin fused um, uh, psychoanalysis um, or whatever it may be, um, we, we always will have somebody that will be able to point you in the direction of to start a conversation. And everybody's always interested in involving people in projects, including us. Uh, we're currently working on a national project in relation to seeing how people access their study leave um, and MRC psych um, teaching and psychotherapy competencies, but based on their protected characteristics such as ethnicity and gender diversity and disability. Um, so we're always working on something and always could do with a spare pair of hands. And we write beautiful letter headed um, thank you letters for people's portfolios as well. So if you're ever wanting to be involved, please do give us a shout. Um, uh, as I've said, I've kind of gone through this slide already, but effectively there are so many different um, diverse parts of the college um, that um, the only way you can really get to know the college is to get involved. Um, I've been unbelievably lucky in the path that's fallen in front of me in terms of the experiences I've had in the college and the doors that have been, been opened to me and it all just started from me designing a flyer for one event. Um, so uh, I'd really recommend getting involved because it will massively enrich your experience of being a higher trainee and also gives you a little bit of light and shade away from clinical work which is required because and clinical work is very difficult um, at times and to have something that gives you a bit of space away from that to do something else that's linked to a passion of yours um, can be the thing that gets you through a difficult week a difficult rotation um, that kind of thing
so ultimately the key thing is to give us a shout we just love to hear from you and so you can connect with me directly and um, so if you scan the maroon um whatsapp um, thing there it'll literally take you directly to my whatsapp so you can whatsapp me directly if you've got a question or just want to say hello my twitter is on the purplish qr code there and if you particularly want to get involved in terms of applying for a position in the ptc or finding out how we work you can scan the qr code in the top right hand corner of the screen or email me on the email address there that i think charlotte will probably put in the chat as well um, but it's just a delight to speak to you guys and thank you for taking the time to, to, to come to this talk today and hopefully we'll be talking to you all soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chris. And um, George, you'll have noticed George has been dropping links in the chat for you to follow for more information about the PTC. And as Chris mentioned, we do have a page um, up about applying to join the PTC. We currently have vacancies for medical and foundation students advertised, but in the next few weeks, we're hoping to put up a few more um, vacancies for, for the PTC. So please do keep an eye on that page. And I'm now going to hand over to Dr. John Russell, our Associate Dean for Curricula, who is going to give an update on the new curriculum for you. That's great, Charlotte. Thank you very much. Uh, can I just check because I'm slightly late? Uh, am I sharing my slides or are you able to share them? Oh, you're going to share them. That's great. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Sarah. Okay, we'll just wait, wait for that to load. Okay, so uh, say so I'm John Russell, um, um, Associate Dean for Curriculum. I'm also a consultant psychiatrist up in uh, Scotland and Fife for adults with intellectual disability. Um, Sarah, could you just flip to the, go back a slide just because I want to um, yeah, acknowledge R Ross Ronson and actually uh, uh, develop the bulk of this talk. It's similar to the talk he gave to poor trainees last week. And so I want to acknowledge his support with with this again ross has been heavily involved in the curriculum portfolio developments as a trainee and also now as a consultant psychiatrist okay so there's on to the next slide tara okay so why did we have to review our curricula well the gmc um are requiring all medical colleges um so not just psychiatry to to review the the curricular frameworks and um all are required to uh, produce new curricula or adapt their curricula to this new framework, which is the GMC, Generic Professional Capability Framework, which, as you can see, covers uh, a range of, of areas. So the next slide, please. So rather than um, squashing the current curricula or the, the curricula that we've, we had up until August and still have in some cases for some trainees in transition, um, into the new framework, we decided we would uh, follow the framework and create the same nine domains. So we then developed, uh, next slide please, Sarah. Um, high level, the GMC required us to develop high level outcomes. And for those of you who have been using the previous curricula or intended learning outcomes. So these have changed to high level outcomes. Again, the GMC, requires this of all, all medical specialties, not just psychiatry. And uh, so we have nine high level outcomes, but in the next slide, uh, you'll see that we have some subdomains, just, we'll just fill up there. So you can see HLO2, the orange one, is, has got the most subdomains, and that's the biggest of the high level outcome areas covering, covering clinical skills, complexity, uncertainty, and communication. Next slide, please. So the framework covers several uh, areas. So I'll just go through these, these briefly and then I'll come on to talk about uh, some of the areas um, uh, as we progress through the talk. So the silver guide is an overarching guide to training in psychiatry. It's sort of a psychiatrized, which I know isn't a proper word, version of the gold guide. Um, obviously we've got curricula, core, specialty and subspecialty curricula. We have the new placement specific um, PDP system, which I'll talk a little bit about, um, which helps map, map activities and evidence to the high level outcomes. We have the ARCP decision aids, which support ARCP panels to sign off training progression. And you're able to have access to these so that you can see some of the things that are expected of an ST4 versus an ST5 versus an ST6 to help you 
try and understand where you should be at, at a certain point in your, in your training. And obviously we have assessments, um, formative, i.e. workplace-based assessments and the summative um, assessments, although you obviously don't have that because you've, by, by being in higher training, you've, uh, you've got through that over that hurdle. So, um, okay, so the next slide. So going back to the silver guide again, this is this is um, quite a big document, but it sits separately from the curricular documents as part of the framework and covers a range of activities. The, the ones highlighted here are just, I say, a range of, of, of um, information, sorry, regarding um, training from learning methods in psychiatry, descriptions of the psychiatric subspecialties, uh, specialties and subspecialties, uh, the curriculum framework and key features, as we've discussed, dual training, roles and responsibilities, out of program experience or time out of training, set there's an assessment strategy and blueprint, ARCP information and other guidance as well. So it's a very it's a big document. Again, a lot of that information or sat previously at the front of all the other the old curricula. We've taken that out and separated it um, to help, hopefully help uh, it being it become easier to navigate. Next slide, please. So curricula, so hopefully you'll have all have seen the new curricula uh, for your specialty or subspecialty. Um, again, curricula, and again, this is for core as well. All curricula have the same HLOs and themes, but the key capabilities vary for the specialty, specialties and subspecialties as they, as they should, uh, as they should do, reflecting the differences. Um, but they're all, it's all within the same framework. And again, um, I'll probably repeat myself several times to say all the curricula are on the curriculum implementation hub on the college website. Next slide, please. So often some of the questions we've had are how many HLOs and key, key capabilities should we be achieving? So I'm just going to read out um, what the silver guide says, as, as, as Ross has indicated uh, in section 13.4, uh, 13.3.4. So, um, HLO and key capability, um, key capabilities that cover three years of training. There's coverage across the three years of training. By the end of higher training, the trainee must have met the expected standard against all of the high level outcomes. In supervision, a trainee is expected to discuss the KCs that could be achieved in a specific placement and to plan activities aligned to their personal development needs to enable them to meet the expected standard for each of the HLOs at the end of each year of training. And remember there's guidance documents, as I've mentioned earlier, regarding that. All key, key capabilities do not have to be achieved in each placement or year. However, over the course of higher training, activities should be undertaken to achieve most of the key capabilities. Now, again, people have said, well, how many is most? Is it 70%, 80%, 99%? Again, it's that's more that's more regarding how um, how, how things are going during the, the placement and obviously a discussion with your, your supervisor. And obviously as trainees progress, as you progress, the cases that you're involved with should become more clinically complex. Again, that was the same in core training if, if, you, if, you, if, you, uh, as, if you experienced and also increasing autonomy. Um, obviously very different from core training because obviously you're now in consultant your consultant trainees. So again, increasing autonomy to autonomy and complexity to allow you to prepare you for um, the world of being a consultant psychiatrist. Next slide, please. So just to clarify, all high level outcome HLOs should be considered in each year. For example, HLO two, which I say is the biggest domain, should have wide coverage in every placement, but H09, which is about research and scholarship, might not occur every year. You might have one year where you're, you're more focused on other, other things. Um, and a short narrative as to why an HLO hasn't been achieved in a placement is, requ is required in the PSPDP. But by the end of, uh, sorry, it's, it says CT, but it should be say ST, um, training must have met the standards for all HLOs, um, and by the end of higher training, most capabilities need to be covered. Okay, next slide, please. So we developed the spe placement sp specific PDPs and, and, and there's often there's questions about why we did that. Well, there was the feedback we had was, was that trainees wanted individualized flexible training and these allow this. It shows the, your personal development journey through higher training 
emphasizes formative conversations, gives structure and focus to supervision, and provides an evidence trail to the ARCP panel. It also allows for a much greater consistency of the psychiatric supervision report, which you do at the end of uh, placement, uh, and accuracy across the UK and also a, enables you to carry some HLOs that you haven't been able to uh, achieve fully through to your next PDP uh, to help achieve them then. Okay, next slide, please. I'll just wait for it to fill up. Okay, so at the start of the placement, trainee agrees um, PDP example with supervisor. The supervisor will then advise on placement specific points to consider. Um, so this is a, sort of an initial, initial meeting just to say, well, this is the placement. These are sort of the things that you can get from this placement across a range of the high level outcomes. After reflection, the trainee goes and drafts the activities and evidence. And then the trainee reviews the draft with their clinical supervisor. That's in the first session. Um, you'll see on the right hand side, there's a, a laptop with um, Paul Emerson at the top, who's the special advisor for Portfolio Online and Ross Runciman. And this information is on the college um, implementation hub videos are available. And I would certainly enc encourage you strongly to, to, to um, watch these. We, 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 we've, we have evidence that when trainees and trainers have watched all the information, it is much easier to understand and set up the PSPDP system. Next slide, please. Okay, so follow-up supervision sessions early on in the placement. Your supervisor will guide how the PDP is crafted to reflect unique training opportunities in that in that, that specific placement or one placement you're in. Agree workplace-based sessions and other forms of evidence to demonstrate progression through key capabilities. And I think actually, you know, going back to Chris's talk uh, previously about how the trainee, trainee events are, are aligned to the high level outcomes so again it's not all about workplace basis but if there are other is there are, there are other activities you can undertake which have been highlighted in conferences or in in other events then actually those are things to add into the PSPDP um which I think is really I'm, 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 it's, 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 it's great to see that development Chris so thank you for thank you for doing that so obviously capturing an agreed plan in the PDP as, as regards the ongoing placement. So the next slide. So as the placement progresses, on, ongoing regular reviews, obviously this is this should be in your hour of supervision per week. Um, trainee agrees and reviews with a true supervisor how things are progressing through the through the capabilities. If things are progressing well, that's that's great. If there's if there's things that need to be uh, 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 more things need to be undertaken, it's about tweaking as you go along. Comments can be made on this in the in the in the in the PDP, and you repeat this at regular intervals throughout the placement. On the next slide. So, if we go back a slide, Sarah. Thank you. So, obviously, this is this is um, perhaps different to what you've undertaken in core training, uh, and again, there's there's a reason for this, which I'll come to to shortly for the psychiatric supervision report. But I say what we found is that. If this is a process that you're undertaking from the beginning of your placement, and I do appreciate there's lots of other things going on when you're training, um, it is much easier and more, more, more understandable for yourself and the trainer, uh, and also helps hugely with the psychiatric supervision report at the end of the placement. And a lot of the feedback we had from trainees previously was this very long, long meeting uh, at the end of a, a placement to complete the psychiatric supervisor report to help with the ARCP decision. Okay, the next slide, I'm jumping back now to the, um, when we talked about the examples of um, what uh, was the difference between the C, uh, ST4, 5 and 6, this is, a, this is an example of a, a core uh, statement, but again, there is the, every specialty and subspecialty has the same, for, the same information across all of their HLO themes and sub uh, domains and subdomains for each of the specialties and subspecialties. So again, have a look at the, the website for that and that'll help guide you as to where you should be going. Next slide. So just finally, top tips for higher training, consultant training. Please undertake the e-learning package. I know I've been going on and on about this, but it's it's there's a, a there's a huge amount of information there which um, 
please I'd encourage you to look at, encourage your trainers to look at if they haven't done so already, especially regarding the setting up the PS PDPs. Remember, um, you know, obviously if you've been in you've been in core training, you're used to competencies, competencies, so they're away now. It's now capabilities um, as, as required by the GMC. But you don't need to undertake all key capabilities in all HLOs in every placement. And some trainees have tried to do that, and that makes the PSPDP hugely complicated. It's about tailoring the PSPDP to your placement. And so you start the PSPDP as soon as you can, um, just to, to make it a lot easier, um, and work on it throughout the placement. Also, um, I say, if you work on, I said, if you work on it throughout the placement, it'll make it'll make the psychiatric supervision report a lot easier to complete. Undertake a spread of workplace based settings throughout the the placement. I think this is one of the this is one of the the areas which we 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 keep very keen to 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 highlight. So workplace based assessments. I think previously by. Uh, in my experience, I've been a trainer for many years, have been often seen as a bit of a pass fail. You know, it's, a, it's if you don't meet expected standard or above expected standard, then that's a fail. But actually, they were always designed to be formative. So actually, you do not need 12, let's say 12 of the required number, um, workplace based assessments of expected standard throughout that year of training. It's about showing progression. So as long as by the end of that, the year of training you are at or above expected standard then that's absolutely fine so please don't regard these as a pass or fail if you we've changed the the, the sort of um, standard as well because previously you'll, you'll remember it says in the old work said in the old work, workplace so below expected standard and this is quite damning i think so we've changed that to approaching expected standard expected and above so it's it's showing progression uh, so i say please don't regard them as pass or fail this is about you showing progression uh, throughout uh, uh, training and finally um, this special interest uh, sessions you are we, we, we managed to um, keep those in place i'm just going to my computer because uh, i can't see the bottom of the screen so hang on a second um, the reason we we had to liaise with the GMC about 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 them because um, to maintain maintain them within your training and these are hugely helpful actually just to again develop um, capabilities in specific even more specific areas and now they're now called uh, protected professional development centers because they are protected because they are um, within your working week you're allowed um, a couple of sessions for these uh, new. And development sessions. Okay, final slide. So again, uh, this is the curriculum hub. There's a lot of information uh, on the hub, as I've alluded to. Um, we've got examples of PDP, PS PDPs as well, um, as well as the RCP guidance documents. Those will be those are being updated. Um, I say there's the e-learning package. There's information around transition. There's been drop. There have been drop-in sessions, and again, training videos, and, and a lot, a lot more. So, I, I, I would encourage you to 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 to, look, to have a look at that. And also, you know, if you're not sure about anything, then get in contact. There, there are contact details on the website. If there's if you have any queries regarding the curriculum, there's there's one uh, the website for queries. If there's any queries about portfolio, again, there's another uh, uh, address uh, email address for that as well. So, I I guess I'd like to just finish by saying. Uh, wishing you all well for your um, uh, consultant training, your higher training, and um, I'll finish there. Thank you very much, John. Um, so I'm now going to hand over to Ros Abbott, our RC Psych e-learning manager, who's going to talk about our trainees online e-learning platform. hear me okay um oh lost the slides sorry if you spare with me
Um, yes, so I'm Ros. I'm e-learning manager at the college. Um, so I'm just going to spend the next few minutes talking to you about CPD e-learning, which is the college's online learning resource for mental health professionals. Um, so the main user group are consultant psychiatrists based in the UK, um, as each resource offers CPD points. But we have a range of subscribers from trainees, GPs, mental health nurses and psychiatrists working outside of the UK as well. Um, so the content offers focused learning for key topics impacting the field um, and we're always publishing content to expand our offering. So we ensure our content is kept up to date through our updates program and authors are required to review and update their content where necessary every two years. And if they're unable to keep it updated, we'll look for new authors or eventually archive the module after five years or so. So a few facts and figures for you. Uh, we currently have over 200 modules and 170 podcasts, all of which are included within a CPD e-learning subscription. But we also have a free uh, selection of free content, which is available to anyone. So in terms of usage figures, uh, in 2022, there were 16,205 completions across 206 different modules and 5,775 5, completions across 173 different podcasts. So subscriptions are based on um, an annual rotation. So anyone registered as a member of the college is able to take advantage of a discounted subscription rate of £83. When you log into the site with your details for the first time, the system will recognise your membership status and grant you access to the discounted rate. There's also the option of being included within an institutional subscription using Open Athens authentication. So it's always worth looking to see if your workplace or institution offers this. And also just to note that as an added benefit of a CPD learning subscription, you're also able to subscribe to the uh, British Association of Psychopharmacology or BAPS uh, online CPD resource for a heavily discounted rate as well. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, CPD e-learning is hosted on the college's e-learning hub and you can see the homepage there on the left of the screen. So as mentioned before, all you have to do is log in and the system will automatically recognise your status and assign you the correct subscription rate. Once payment's been made by the website, you'll have instant access. You can search our catalogue using tools available on the hub. So there's functionality to search by type, duration, category and CPD domain, but you can also search by keyword as well. And if you want to know what any hot topics are, we collate the top 10 modules and podcasts from the previous month so you can easily see what the most popular resources are at the moment. Once you've selected a module or podcast, you just need to follow the steps to open the content and begin your learning. Next slide, please. So since moving to the hub, our uh, content is built in our more modern template. So uh, all of the modules and podcasts are fully responsive and have accessibility considerations built in. So you can navigate through them using the menu on the left hand side of the page, as well as via the previous and next buttons, which are located at the bottom of the page. And it's all fully responsive, so it doesn't matter what device you're working on, whether it's a phone, iPad, computer, it will all format correctly. You can work through all of it at your own pace. Your progress is recorded and saved as you work, so you can leave it and come back to it later. And our podcasts also offer playback functions, so you can pause, rewind and fast forward as needed. Um, all of our content includes learning outcomes, so there's guided learning towards a specific set of objectives throughout, and modules also contain uh, recap questions and various forms of interactions to keep you engaged as you learn. So this example on the screen shows a click to reveal exercise where you click on and off in each of the fuse boxes and associated text appears to provide some more detail. Uh, next slide please. Both modules and podcasts include a short test at the end. So for most of the modules, there are 10 MCQs, um, five questions if it's a shorter quick bite module. And for podcasts, there are five as well. So you can test your knowledge at the end. Um, you need to obtain 100% in the test in order to generate a certificate as proof of completion and to collect any CPD points. Next slide, please. Once a certificate has been um, generated, it's stored in the uh, award section of the website and is accessible at all times. And the certificate can also be saved as a PDF and printed if a hard copy is needed. Um, along with the content itself, we include a collated list of useful resources, um, which is provided by the author for each module or podcast, which contains key reading references and also any useful websites 
And we also offer take home notes, which contain all of the key takeaways from the module to keep as a handy guide, which you can save and download and save or print if you prefer. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so elsewhere on the hub, we also host Trainees Online or TRON, which you may have used as a revision tool when sitting paper A of the MRC Psych, uh, the Congress Webinar Library and the Neptune modules, which are seven modules covering the management of harms resulting from the use of club drugs and novel psychoactive substances. These are free to access for all, so you don't need a subscription to complete them. Uh, and just to flag as well that we also have made the module Mind Your Language, Effective Communication and Clinical Practice temporarily free to access to help support people with this newer aspect of the curriculum. Uh, next slide, please. So just to sum up, uh, CPD eLearning's URL is elearninghub.rcpsych.ac.uk, where you'll find not only the modules, podcasts and other resources I've mentioned, but also FAQs, subscription information and support, including the backlink once you've subscribed. If you have any questions, please get in touch with us. Our email address is elearning at rcpsych.ac.uk. We're also on Twitter and our handle is rc at rcpsych underscore elearn. Uh, thank you for your time. Lovely, thank you very much, Roz. Um, we're now going to hear from Fiona Watson, the RC Psych librarian, about all of our library services we have to offer. Um, I think we'll take out the Q&A section at the end if you'd like to drop any questions you have in the Q&A function, um, and I'll hand over to Fiona. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm the college librarian, and if you've been to the college, you will know that we have a library space on the ground floor in the members area. Um, you may not have noticed we have some other collections of books as well. So in G5, which is also next to the members area, we have a collection of antiquarian books. So if anyone has a particular interest in history, those are available for members to come and look at. If you want to, you just need to book in. Um, so we had someone in yesterday looking at the use of malaria to treat syphilis or what it was called then general paralysis. Um, we also have a lot of books in our basement as well. So the books that we prioritise putting on the ground floor are generally the ones which are somewhat up to date, not all up to date, um, but all the stuff from sort of the early 1900s up to the 1970s, 80s, 90s is all in the basement. So if you have an interest in that kind of thing, say you're interested in the first sort of uses of LSD uh, in the 1960s, then let us know. That is also something we can help you access. We do book loans primarily by post because not many people are in the building very often. Um, so we post things out to you and then you're responsible for returning them. So a lot of people find that very helpful. Um, but the most of what we do is to provide you resources online um, so you can access them anytime, anywhere. Um, so we do that primarily through providing you with a RC Psych Open Athens account. So a lot of you might already have an NHS Open Athens account or even a University Open Athens account if you're involved with research. You can have the RC Psych one as well, and I would recommend that you take whatever access is offered to you, because all it's going to do at the end of the day is give you better access to research and help you save money from buying articles. So what I'm going to do is rather than sharing slides, I'm going to give you a quick demo of the library services, because uh, I think that's probably going to be a little bit more helpful. So I'm going to share my screen. So if you can't currently see the RC Psych intranet, please shout. Um, but I'm going to start out with Google. Googling Google, such a terrible thing to do. So if you were starting here, the easiest way to find the RC Psych library is just by Googling RC Psych Library. And then it should pop straight up. Now we've got various information on here. It's like you can check the library catalog if you're thinking of borrowing something. Although all borrowing is pretty much done by email, so just drop me an email and I will put my email address in the chat. Um, but mostly what you're going to want to do is access journals and databases. So just click this one. And this is your jumping off point for all the access we give you. 
So you can see, you can search for a specific journal title, like Lancet Psychiatry, Academic Psychiatry, that kind of thing. You can browse our collection of eBooks. I'll just open that up now. That's when it's going to ask you to log in, but I've already logged in today, so it's not going to ask me. So through here, you can access things like the Morsi Prescribing Guidelines, Morsi Practice Guidelines for Physical Health Conditions. And we mainly buy books, whether they're print or online, based on recommendations. So if there's something you want and we don't have it, let me know. So that's our eBooks. You can see we've got about 30,000 of them. So there should be some useful stuff for you there, but it's always the way that we don't have the one thing that you want. So if there is a one thing that you want, let me know what that is. So if I go back, you can search for a journal and then we also have three databases. So PsychInfo, Medline and Embase, which gives you a great place to start if you're doing some more in-depth research. If you're getting to the point of using a specific database rather than just searching all, then it might be a good idea to get in touch with the library. So we offer training and that varies from a lot of people will, when they get an Open Athens account, just have a quick 10 minute Teams call with me to get sort of acclimatized to what we offer. That's fine. If you were about to write an article and you wanted a full hour of remind me how to do Boolean searching, um, all that kind of stuff, that's fine too, we can offer that. So get in touch if that's the situation you're in. We also uh, offer research services, so research assistance. You can request a literature search from me um, and those what we help people with is really varied. After the last time I did one of these meetings, someone got in touch and said, can you send me 10 articles on penfluoridol? I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, um, because she was doing a journal club and she wanted some articles to select from. That's fine if you're getting involved in a systematic review and you're writing out your protocol, your search strategies, deciding on your question, we can help with that too. So yeah, we're here to receive, uh, assist you in whatever research you're doing. We also offer interlibrary loans. Um, so if there's an article that we don't provide through our own subscriptions, we have networks with other libraries, we can get you hold of things through that as well. That doesn't cost you any money, none of the library services do. Um, I think that covers pretty much everything. We've got a few other little bits and pieces on here. For example, we have access to Asylum, the Radical Mental Health magazine. So if you're looking for some alternate perspectives, then that might be a good place to start. We can also help you get set up on some other softwares like this is RAM. This is one of the softwares that's really useful for doing compiling large amounts of research, say for a systematic review and running inclusion exclusion criteria and sharing with a group. So yeah, just bear us in mind if you have any research needs. I have already put my uh, a link to sign up for a library account in the chat and I'm just going to add in my email address now. Otherwise, let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I think I'm done. Thank you very much to Fiona. Um, so we've now got a few minutes for any questions. If anyone um, in the audience has any questions for any of our panel members today, um, you can drop them in the Q&A section or the comments section, um, and we'll be able to um, point that in the right direction. So just give you a few moments. No, so it doesn't look like anything's coming through. Um, so if you do think of anything you'd like to ask any of our panelists, please do get in touch with us. You can email specialtytraining at rcpsych.ac.uk and either one of the team will be able to pick it up or we can direct you to one of our lovely fab um, panelists. So thank you very much for joining us today. We hope it's been really useful and um, enjoy your afternoon.